Hey everybody, this is Steve X and I'm bringing you my latest Average Gamer review for The Last of Us. This game is released on June 14th, 2013 of this year, exclusive to PS3 from Naughty Dog Development, which you might know from a small series called Uncharted with main character Nathan Drake. If you have not played Uncharted and you have a PS3, you owe it to yourself to try out those games. They are some of the best you can get on the PS3. So, um, quick note about this game, uh, if you've seen the cover art and you've heard a little bit about it, the main character is not Ellen Page. The character Ellie in this game is not Ellen Page. Uh, she's been making some waves in gaming due to her starring role in an upcoming game called Beyond Two Souls by Quantic Dream, which is due out in October 2013, uh, but that is not this game. Um, and actually, it's funny, in interviews, she has actually said recently that she is not happy with this game ripping off her likeness, which uh, I thought was kind of interesting. It has no bearing on this review. I just thought it was kind of interesting. But anyway, so let's start off. Let's talk about the synopsis. So this game starts in modern day time near the town of Austin, Texas. You meet Joel, who is a single dad with his teenage daughter, Sarah, and they're trying to make ends meet. And you really feel that and experience that just from watching their characters from the very first scenes on. Well, there is an outbreak of a fungal pathogen that is dispersed by spores that turns its victims into feral killers. Uh, if you want an analogy, think of the movie 28 Days. Uh, very similar. Later, we find out that the infected become more mutated and more like monsters over time. So you'll see that later, uh, later on as the, as the story develops. So you try to escape the outbreak and bad things happen. Well, you find yourself 20 years later and the vast majority of the population has been wiped out or infected. Joel is now living in Boston, which is a quarantine zone under heavy martial law. He's trying to make ends meet, but he's now in a broken society where you have to do whatever you need to to survive. And he's a strong female partner now with a woman named Tess. Well, a deal goes bad, and that's where we meet Ellie. She's a 14-year-old teenage girl who bears a strong resemblance to Joel's past daughter prior to the outbreak, Sarah. Well, Joel and Tess take a job to try to escort young Ellie to a rebel group called the Fireflies, for reasons unknown because I'm not going to give away spoilers or anything like that. Well, the story takes off and a one-year journey across what's left of the U.S. is now broken into four main parts denoted by the seasons. So the game is broken into summer, fall, winter, and spring. You encounter hordes of infected, groups of bandits who kill and rob to survive, some kindred spirits, you cannot help but form a personal bond with and some very colorful and some truly twisted and sick individuals who will make your skin crawl when you learn of their true intentions. You see that nothing is black and white except for survival in this game. And you will see Joel grow from a loner who wants no attachments to a father figure who will stop at nothing to protect Ellie. You will get goosebumps when you see what he does to someone who threatens her. Think of the movie Man on Fire with Denzel Washington. Great movie, great movie. I love it. I'm a father, so I, I can relate. This game is all about the story. There's over one and a half hours of some of the best Definitely cinematics that you will see in a video game, which I will actually post all of those separately. I'll These make a separate series negotiate. into the four different seasons uh, because I believe they warrant it. They are, so, they are so good. In this game, you will feel the character's loss, their desperation, the triumph when things go right. Uh, it's just an intense ride all the way through. Well, that's about the story, and that's really as much as I can say without going into spoilers and details. So let's go ahead and break it down to a proper game review. So first off, let's talk about graphics. So graphics, I don't know how else to say it. It's a, it's a 10 for the amazing details. The cinematic and in-game rendering are the best that I have seen to date, and these really showcase the edge that PS3 hardware has over the Xbox 360. And yes, I'm saying there's a slight edge right. that PS3 has, but no one really knows how to develop for it because it's kind of tricky, but blah, 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 tech geek stuff. There's an obvious attention to detail with fluid character movement and facial expressions that prove the best motion capture available on Come this out. hardware. You have to see it to believe it. With all four seasons represented in this game and changing backdrops from cities to Thank sewers to mountains to, to a snowy chalet, everything is represented that you could want. The one small critique I have is some of the mutated enemies and some of the ruined landscapes can seem fairly familiar because most of them look like this in a post-apocalyptic game, so you can't really blame them too much for it, but some of that stuff was a little normal, um, not really surprising, but overall the graphics are top-notch, um, especially the characters. Sound. 
I will give this game a nine. Really, everything is there. It's crisp. It's lifelike. It's not mind blowing, but it's still above average. And I don't really know how it's better to uh, describe the sound. So now let's talk about where this really excels in the voice acting. Every character in this game, from Joel to Ellie to Sarah to Tess, you, you'll meet them as you play. Other survivors who instantly gain your compassion, even the twisted piece of shit that you meet in Silver Lake, they are all wholly believable, expertly acted from start to finish. They will engulf you in this story. So let's look at gameplay. Gameplay, I'll give you, I'll give it a 9.0. So the movement is fairly fluid. Controls seem a little strange at first, but I was able to quickly adjust. Aside from some shots that seem like they should have hit their targets, Bitch. which all game, you know, I'm a, I'm a whiner, and enemies that flank you and instantly kill you when you're not looking, which honestly adds to the survival focused feeling of the game, the gameplay mechanics mostly feel right for a game of this type. So I'll leave it with that night. So story, if I could count above 10, which I'm dumb so I can't, this game is a 10. You cannot possibly convey this better without revealing the key plot points. So I'll really have to do my best here because I do not want to give away spoilers. You will care for these characters from the very opening sequence. Your jaw will drop and you may even tear up when bad things happen to characters that you form an attachment to. You will hate and want to put a medieval hurting on those that threaten you and yours. And you will feel strangely a large sense of gratification when you punish shit, shit. those that deserve it. You will also feel conflicted as the moral greater good and personal decisions here, come in here. conflict and are made. Even the ending, it's oh. rewarding, it's heartwarming, and yet it's bittersweet all at the same time. Pretty much like real life. And, Fuck, and even the alive? little details like how, how Ellie is trying to learn to whistle or mumble songs. You know, when she's getting bored, she does little things like, like boom, ba -ching, ba -ching, ba -ching, you know, just just little sound effects and stuff like that. It's it's cute and it's fun and it just really makes you feel like these are people. And even when she swears like a trucker when the circumstances, yeah, I, I'm telling you, she's 14, she's got a mouth on her. But uh, the circumstances justify it and it's just overall it makes her for a strong character. So really overall for this game, it's a 10. Although it's not the most original game, considering it's another post-apocalyptic survival story, it's the best story yet given this character and story development that will leave you feeling anger, sorrow, spite, even regret, and a sense of accomplishment as you experience the roller coaster that this game takes you on. The true difference here is how the detailed graphics, along with the heavy emotional story, make you feel a strong connection to the characters. And you truly care what happens to them. It's very, very hard to accomplish this in a video game. And Naughty Dog, they knocked it out of the park with this game. The only other 10 I've, I feel was warranted for a video game was Bioshock Infinite, which if you haven't played, I give that 10 for its incredible originality and in story and in gameplay and from the mind-blowing plot turns that'll leave you draw on the floor. But this one has the story and the emotional connection that you will feel with these characters. So you owe it to yourself to try out this game. So that's my review. I, I hope you like it. I hope it's objective and I hope I didn't give away anything in here. I really try my best to write down the notes so I don't give away any plot points here. So uh, if you get a chance, if you have a PS3, you have to check out this game. If you want to experience an incredibly intense and compelling story and at the same time feel like you're experiencing a, a next-gen PS4 title, then you want to play The Last of Us. So that's it for my review. If you like what you heard, go ahead and give it a like. I really appreciate it. And go ahead and subscribe. I've got lots more content coming your way, so stay tuned. So that's it for me, Steve X. Thanks for listening, and take care.